Conrad Kurz, also known as Knight Hunter, was one of the 20 Primarchs created by the Emperor of Mankind, raised on the hellish world of Nostromo and plagued by prophetic visions of death. Kurz became known as one of the most brutal and unstable Primarchs, a creature of terror and darkness that set him apart from many of his brothers. Ultimately, he betrayed the Emperor and joined with the war master Horus Lubrical in the Horus Heresy. The child that would come to be known as Conrad Kurz was first recorded as crashing through the surface and into the core of the night shrouded world of Nostromo. The crust of Nostromo bore high quantities of the mineral adamantium which proved the basis of the planet's immense mining and purifying industries. The vast majority of the planet's population lived in abject poverty, toiling in the mines while the rich grew in affluence, exploiting the already downtrodden workers. Crime ran mostly unchecked, depression was inescapable, and overpopulation was kept in check more by suicide than by any other major. Unlike many of the other Primarchs, Conrad Kurz was not taken in by any family and was left to raise himself. He spent his early life surviving off his wits and determination, feeding himself by hunting the feral animals that roamed through the vast city of Nostromo Quintus. He was continually plagued by visions of the darkest possible future horrifyingly potent waking dreams that would curse him throughout his life. During his short youth, Kurz was pitched into a destructive cycle of persecution and murder, focusing on the criminal elements of Nostromo's society. His vigilante actions began small, intervening when he witnessed something he believed to be wrong but rapidly escalating into hunting down those he believed had committed transgressions. At first, several people prominent within the city's corrupt hierarchy disappeared. Leaders of the most vocal opposition to the status quo vanished in similar circumstances. Bodies of known criminals began to appear, gutted like fish by some cruel assailant. Officials were found hung from high windows body parts blocked storm water drains. Many of the corpses found were so horribly beaten by their assailant that identification was impossible. Within the year, the crime rate of Nostromo Quintus fell to near zero. Society underwent massive changes, most notable of which was the self-imposed curfew that came into being. Mothers began to threaten children that if they continued to misbehave, the night haunter would come for them. This term quickly came into common usage, describing a dark creature that stalked the city, ready to disembowel anyone it believed to be a criminal or heretic with dirty razor-sharp talons. Curse so hope for the inhabitants of his world, he had become the only object of fear and hate within the city, appearing before the nobles that had survived his vigilante purge, Knight Hunter became the first monarch of Nostromo Quintus. He assimilated knowledge almost greedily and became considered a fair and temperate ruler until word of some injustice reached his ears. He would then hunt the guilty through the streets, wearing them down and then killing and mutilating them. The unpredictable pattern of benevolent wisdom and hideous vengeance ushered in a new level of efficiency and honesty. Other cities around the planet followed suit in an attempt to keep the Night Haunter from their doors. Kaz foresaw the coming of his father, the Emperor of Mankind, for he knew all things. The answers came to him as they always did in his dreams. Now master of his world, he found his transhuman senses sharpening beyond anything he had ever imagined possible. He knew on some voiceless level he was becoming something, ripening, maturing into whatever he was born to be. The emperor had watched the way that Nostromo walked from his divine auguries. The citizens were clean and efficient, 
walking towards a common good with determination and silence. The night shrouded streets were completely empty as the entire planet slept. Though they lived in ignorance of the glory of the Imperium of Man, the Dark King undoubtedly possessed great authority and was able to command unquestioning respect. He had molded his society into a model of productivity, matchless productivity, natural conformity, and total obedience. A short time into the reign of the Night Haunter as Nostromo's benevolent dictator, the Emperor's Great Crusade finally reached the outskirts of the Nostromo star system. The coming of the Emperor of Mankind was an event that had been prophesied in Nostromo's history, an event that would lead to the planet's downfall. The Emperor landed on Nostromo and led an imperial delegation to the center of Nostromo Quintus on foot. The citizens of Nostromo, adapted to the near constant darkness, could not bear to look upon the sheer radiance of the Emperor. The city wept at what was remembered as the delegation of light, weeping collectively every man, woman and child gathered in the streets, their pale faces staring at the strangers in their midst as the sky was brightened by the four stars of void ship engines. Most wept as the healing light the Emperor projected reflected off the rain slagged streets into their faces. The strangers walked in a slow, regal parade. The ground trembled with their rhythmic tread. They walked in great grinding phalanxes, different formations wearing armor of black, of gold, of royal purple, or earth and grey. Giants led them, giants towering above their warriors, just as their warriors towered above mortal men. Leading the giants was a sun incarnated in human skin, his soul fire uncontainable in a sheath of flesh and bone. Those brave enough to look upon him directly were blinded for daring to gaze at his radiant countenance. At the end of the broad road leading to Night Haunter's palace at the city's heart, the Primarch stood, waiting for the delegation to approach. The army of strangers seized as one, every single one of the quarter million soldiers standing motionless in the same moment. The four giants stepped forwards, the blazing guard led them. The first demigod, clad in wrought gold, inclined his white haired head in majestic acknowledgement. A king greeting an equal, he introduced himself as Rogal Dorn. The Night Honda said nothing, but in his mind's eye, he saw the giant die, dragged down by a hundred murderers in a dark tunnel, their knives and swords wet with the warrior's blood. The second giant wore armor of patterned gray, edged with 10,000 words, as if a scholar had taken a quill to a stone. He nodded his shaven, tattooed head, likewise inked with scripture the littering gold upon the tanned skin. He introduced himself as Loga Aurelian, his voice a hymn where dawns had been a measured, stately demand. There was sorrow in his otherwise kind eyes, sorrow at the dark city, its unhealthy people, the obviousness of their colorless, exhausting lives. Again, the Night Haunter said nothing. He saw this warrior crowned in psychic fire, screaming up at a burning sky. The third giant wore armor of riveted, dense black. His arms were solid silver, yet contoured and moving as living limbs. His voice was the steely grind of a foundry's bowels. He introduced himself as Ferrus Manus. His eyes were dark, but not cold. The Night Haunter remained silent, seeing within his mind an image of the future in which this warrior's head was clutched by its empty eye sockets in another man's armored fingers. The last giant wore armor painted the violet of an alien sunset. His hair was silvery, long and elegant. He alone smiled, and he alone met the Night Haunter's eyes with warmth in his own. He introduced himself as Fulgrim. 
The Night Haunter still said nothing. In the future that played out over and over, he saw this final giant in only the faintest of images, always slithering and laughing, never entirely visible. At last, the Golden God himself stepped forwards, his arms wide open. He drew to speak, but as he did, Curse succumbed to a vision so potent and horrifying that he went to his knees and tried to claw his own eyes out, but was stopped by the Emperor. He felt a hand upon his head. The excruciating pain died in a pause, restoring his sanity in a moment of mercy. The Night Haunter then looked up to see the Golden God, faceless and ageless, resolve into the image of a man. The following words were recorded for posterity by those who witnessed this fateful meeting and still echo with terrible import across the gulf of time. Be at peace, Conrad Kaz. I have arrived, and I intend to take you home. That is not my name, father. My people gave me a name, and I will bear it until my dying day, and I know full well what you intend for me. Kaz submitted to the Emperor's will as if he had already seen it, as if he was playing out a part he had long feared would fall to him. From that moment on, the fate of the 8th Legion was set on a path of oblivion. When Kaz first took command of his legion, he was vicious and horrifying to behold, but nonetheless was a regal leader with a clear sense of justice. This Kaz was in stark contrast to the monster he would eventually become. The Night Haunter quickly adapted to the teachings of the Imperium, studying the complex doctrines of the Legio Astartes under Fulgrim's tutelage. During this time, Kaz had visions of the Horus Heresy and Fulgrim's fall, telling him of their dark future. Kaz was eventually placed in command of his Space Marine Legion, which he renamed the Night Lords. Although he and his legion excelled in many theaters of war, a tendency soon became apparent. It never occurred to the Night Lords to use anything other than total and decisive force to achieve their goals. Over the first few years, the Night Lords were molded by the Primarch into an efficient humorless force, possessing the fanatical thoroughness of witch hunters. Night Hunter encouraged his legion to decorate their armor with images designed to inspire fear in the enemy, a tactic that proved incredibly effective. Soon, rumors of the impending presence of the Night Lords would cause a system to pay all outstanding tithes, seize all illegal activities, and put to death any mutants and suspected heretics. Reinforcements to replace the Night Lords that fell in battle were selected from the population of Nostramo, but in Night Haunter's absence, the population of the planet collapsed back into the corrupt and decadent ways that had prevailed before his arrival. Originally, Kaz had intended to only have the best and brightest of Nostramo serve within the Legion, but in a ploy to avoid the Imperial Tithe, the noble families of the world emptied its jails and sent him murderers and thieves. By the time Kurz had realized what was happening, he already viewed the Night Lords as a corrupted legion. Kurz began to lose some of the control he held over his legion, and the visions that plagued him increased in both lucidity and quantity. Kurz was unique among the Primarchs in that he hated his own legionnaires, viewing them as the very criminals he sought out to destroy. Kaz's relations with his brothers were equally strained. The Night Lord's brutal tactics caused controversy among other Primarchs, most notably Rogal Dorn and Vulcan. However, while he was widely reviled, Kaz himself states that he didn't hate any of his brothers save Korax. The two were extremely similar in their appearance, tactics, and upbringing, but unlike him, Korax had returned his humanity and dignity, despite his hellish upbringing. Kaz himself did not know if he hated Korax out of self-loathing or the fact that he saw the Raven Lord 
as still holding onto naive ideals despite his upbringing. For his part, Korak stated that he hated nothing about Kaz save his methods of waging war. Relations with Vulcan were even more strained, with the Primarch nearly fighting Kaz over the fate of the Karatan. Some time after Kaz had a particularly violent vision where he saw the future monstrosity he was destined to become, Kaz was horrified by his future and when snapped out of his trance, he realized he had murdered one of his archivists. This was the first known person Kurz killed whom he considered innocent. And it was at this moment that Kurz realized he himself now deserved punishment. Later in a campaign with the Imperial Fists and Empress children in the Sheroz system, he learned of the renewed crime and anarchy on his home world. Falling into anguish, the Night Haunter tried to confide in his brother Primarchs Fulgrim and Rugal Dawn, but they had never been close to him in the beginning, and their reaction was less than favorable to his claims. When Fulgrim revealed Kurz had told him of disturbing visions of civil war, Dawn confronted the Night Haunter on the matter. Finally snapping from Fulgrim's betrayal of confidence, Kurz attacked and wounded Dawn as well as massacring several Imperial Fists that were guarding him before taking the Night Lord's fleet to Nostramo. A few Imperial pursuit craft arrived just in time to see the Night Lord's laser batteries firing into the hole left by the Night Haunter's arrival decades earlier. Nostramo's core overheated and the world exploded. As a Primarch and a Lord of Crusades, it was Kurz's right to liberate or destroy the world as he saw fit, but in the moment that Nostramo died, the Night Lords lost their last tether to restraint, though it would take the treachery of others to bring this change to light. Some believe that Kurz's destruction of his homeworld was also as much a symbol of defiance to his brother Primarchs as an act intended to return his former domain to some semblance of order. Night Haunter's terrible acts caused him to become susceptible to the whispers of chaos. The campaigns of the Night Lords became less justifiable, terror campaigns leaving a trail of devastated walls across the galaxy. Night Haunter no longer crusaded in the Emperor's name, instead fighting only in the name of death and fear. Eventually, the Emperor was forced to order the recall of Night Haunter to answer charges laid against him and his men. But before the Night Lords reached Terra, a new crisis erupted. When the Horus heresy broke out, Night Haunter was quick to swear his legion to the forces of the War Master Horus. Kurz revealed his treachery during the drop site massacre, launching his legion against the loyalist forces of the Raven Guard, Salamanders, and Iron Hands. During the battle, Kurz and Loga battled against Korax. After the massacre, Kurz captured Vulcan, but found that the perpetual Primarch could not be killed despite his best efforts. After unleashing every torment imaginable on Vulcan, the Salamanders Primarch was eventually able to escape Kurz's clutches. Two years after the drop site massacre, Kurz engaged Lionel Johnson in a series of hit and run battles all over the Thramas sector. Eventually, Kurz would leave a message for his brother to meet him on the planet Sagwalsa. Here, he would reveal some prophecy to the lion. Afterwards, a fight would ensue between the two Primarchs and their respective troops. Eventually, Kurz would slash the lion's throat and the dark angel Coswin would stab the Night Haunter in the back. Both legions retreated. The next encounter between the two brothers would begin when the Dark Angels ambushed the Night Lords and would end with the Lion dealing Kurz 11 identifiable wounds that are instantly fatal to an Astartes. These injuries would put Kurz in a comatose state. While recovering, Sevatar would take temporary command of the Legion and divide it into six fleets that would go wherever the respective commander directed it. During this reorganization, the Dark Angels would attack again. During the second attack, 
Kaz would reawaken and board the invincible reason. He would remain in hiding upon the Dark Angel's flagship for the next 16 weeks. Kaz was able to evade capture on the massive ship, massacring every search team and confounding the lion himself. When the Dark Angel's ship arrived over McCrag, Kaz made his escape and landed on the planet by hacking into the invincible reason and initiating a mass drop pod landing, commandeering one of the vessels. Kaz then unleashed havoc upon McCrag's capital, massacring all he came across and eluding any capture. After killing Fratus Augustine in a chapel within the fortress of Hera, Kaz was confronted by both Reboot Gellman and Lionel Johnson, managing to hold out against both Prime Marks simultaneously. Kaz unveiled his trap and detonated the explosives he had rigged around the chapel. Kaz escaped in the chaos while Gilliman and the lion only survived thanks to Parpas Dantioch teleporting them to Sotha with the pharaohs. Thinking both Primarchs dead, Kaz swept aside a pack of space wolves and was about to kill Gilliman's mother Tarasha Yutin when he was beset upon by the now insane Vulcan. Who had teleported to Macrag. Kaz in genuine shock due to not having any visions of Vulcan battled the Salamander's Primarch across Macrag. The duel was only interrupted by the Cabal assassin John Grammaticus who stabbed and apparently killed Vulcan with the Fulgurite. Kaz wished the Fulgurite for himself and as he attacked Grammaticus his comrade Damon Britannus used a captured demon to punish the Primarch into the warp. After being trapped inside the warp for what seemed to him to be weeks, Kaz managed to escape and re-emerged into the Materium in front of Macrag's capital. Haunted by visions of Sanguinis' death aboard the Vengeful Spirit, Kaz then infiltrated the Emperor of Imperium Secundus' throne room on Macrag, badly wounding Ascalon, and using him as a hostage Kaz revealed to the angel that he not only foresaw the death of Sanguinius, but his own as well. Kaz had come to believe that the scattering of the Primarchs, his own life on Nostramo, the Horus heresy, and his own eventual death by the Officio Assassinorum were all part of a grand scheme by the Emperor. The Night Haunter wished to know why Sanguinius chose to be a slave to the Emperor and why he had not accepted the offer of demons on Cygnus Prime to become their champion. When Sanguinius expressed his continued faith in the father, Kaz gave the angel a chance to strike him down. An offer Sanguinius refused and instead bleeded to the Night Haunter that there was still final chance to join the loyalists and seek redemption. Stating that Horus's rebellion was nothing in the grand scheme of things, the galaxy was doomed to eternal war, and only chaos existed in the end. Kaz set off an explosive trap and escaped from the throne room. Kaz continued to plague Macrag, spreading terror and walking with anti gilliman bandits on the world. Kaz even was able to send a suicide bomber to destroy a strategically important bridge on the Imperium Secundus capital. However, Lionel Johnson, now Lord Protector of Imperium Secundus, was able to corner the Night Hunter in the Alma Mons region of Macrag. After a vicious battle, Kaz was defeated by the Lion. However, the Lion could not bring himself to slay his demented brother and instead broke his back over his knee. Kaz was brought into custody and put on trial before the Emperor of Imperium Secundus, Sanguinius. During that trial, Kaz admitted to his actions, but refused to accept guilt because he was made to act that way. Thus, they were not crimes. Kaz then divided Gilliman from the Lion, accusing the Lion of ordering secret orbital attacks and beating them against each other. The Lion sought to kill Kaz, but Sanguinius prevented him with words, and Gilliman broke his sword. Later, Gilliman and Sanguinius stood before Kaz in judgment and to execute him. Gilliman said that he should be the executioner, and Kaz said that it was just like the Emperor. However, Sanguinius was filled with his psychic power 
and attacked Kaz to his cries that it was not how he would die. Suddenly the lion appeared, asking for Sanguinius to stop. Troops came into the room, demanding the lion's surrender, but he responded that Kaz was able to see the future, and he repeated that Kaz's claim that his death would be at the hands of an assassin sent by the emperor. This, to the lion, was proof that the emperor was still alive. Sanguinius recognized that his own visions of death would also be true. Gilliman demanded what would come of Kaz. The lion knelt before his brothers and promised that he would be Kaz's jailer, and Kaz laughed at the confusion of the scene. Kaz remained a chained captive aboard the Invincible Reason, with the lion occasionally visiting him to try and use his prophetic visions and insight into helping the effort. However, the Night Hunter, having since regenerated from his spinal injury, rarely proved cooperative enough and continued to taunt the lion. Kaz, upon the invincible reason, was part of the combined fleet of Gilliman, the lion, and Sanguinius as they tried to breach their own storm and reach Terra. Upon having a vision that his destiny lay at Davin, Sanguinius went aboard the invincible reason and took the chained Kaz with him hoping to not only use his prophetic insight into what he must do, but also try and show the Night Haunter that destiny could be changed. Sanguinius was forced to defeat several Dark Angels guards through non-lethal force, enraging the lion and almost causing him to destroy Davin with cyclonic torpedoes. However, the lion and Gilliman both eventually followed Sanguinius and Kurz to the surface and together the four Primarchs journeyed to the temple on Davin where Horus had fallen. At the temple, Kaz fell into anger and depression as he realized he had foreseen none of this and that his view that destiny was set in stone was being tested. When Sanguinius was swallowed up by the demon Madale's portal, Kaz broke down and seemed genuinely concerned for Sanguinius. Gilliman and the lion attempted to get Kaz to predict a way to save Sanguinius, but the Night Haunter in his despair declared he had no idea what to do, he had foreseen none of this. As demons erupted across Davin, Kaz was dragged back aboard the Invincible Reason. Following the battle, a way to Terra was clear, but blockaded by the fleas of Horus. Gilliman and the lion agreed to distract the blockade, while Sanguinius and the Blood Angels raced to Terra, as was their destiny. Sanguinius took custody of Kaz and brought him aboard the Red Tear, declaring that he would face the Emperor's judgment. However, once aboard the vessel, Sanguinius put Kaz in a stasis coffin and said that just as he was about to meet his destiny on Terra, so must Kaz follow his foreseen path. Sanguinius declared that he would freeze Kaz in the stasis coffin and jettison him into space. Though it may take millennia for the Imperial Assassin, Kaz had foreseen killing him to find the Night Haunter, one day fate would catch up. The raging Night Haunter was frozen in the coffin and shot into the void of space. Within his stasis capsule, Kaz floated through the void of space for the rest of the heresy, eventually being discovered by the human salvage ship Sheldron, several years after it had ended. A hidden Imperial assassin of the vessel broke the surface of the capsule, awakening Kaz who proceeded to massacre all on board. In the end, only Kaz, a crewman known as Elva and a Kaladis temple acolyte Gun remained. Gun was able to alert his temple to Kaz's general location in the galaxy before meeting his end while Elva was taken by Kaz as a slave to navigate the Sheldron. As the vessel lacked a warp drive, the trip to Kaz's intended destination, Sagwalsa, would take four years. During that time, Kaz tormented Elva while also instructing the slave in his philosophies. After years of travel, the duo arrived at Sagwalsa and rendezvoused with a Night Lord's force under Talas Valkuran. However, Elva saw a glimpse into Kaz's mind, coming to the realization that the Night Haunter in fact had doubts regarding his visions and beliefs. To keep the secret safe, Kaz had the Night Lords dispose of the slave. On Sagwalsa, 
Kaz was able to rejoin his legion. After the invasion of Terra, the Night Lords did not splinter and flee like the rest of the traitor legions. Instead, they continued to attack the Imperium. However, their tactics seemed to change, betraying a self-destructive desperation. The Night Haunter himself was losing the sanity and sense of purpose that had earned the respect of his legion, and in his last days would frequently erupt into fits of violence, incoherency, and sadism. Many, such as Sevatar, became disheartened at what their Primarch had become. The Umbra himself, wishing to disband the Night Lords forever, dispatched half the Kaladis Temple of Assassins to terminate the renegade Primarch. My sons, the galaxy is burning. We all bear witness to a final truth. Our way is not the way of the Imperium. You have never stood in the Emperor's light, never worn the Imperial Eagle, and you never will. You shall stand in midnight clad, your clothes forever red with the life blood of my father's failed empire. Warring through the centuries as the talons of a murdered god. Rise, my sons, and take your wrath across the stars in my name, in my memory. Rise, my night lords. Legend has it that a lone agent named Moshan was purposely allowed to infiltrate the legion's lair on the world of Sagwalsa and confront the fallen Primarch, now a naked and hunched monster. Before his death, Machin video log recalls Night Haunter's enigmatic last words. Your presence does not surprise me, assassin. I have known of you ever since your craft entered the eastern fringes. Why did I not have you killed? Because your mission and the act you are about to commit proves the truth of all I have ever said or done. I merely punished those who had wronged, just as your false emperor now seeks to punish me. Death is nothing compared to vindication. The final remembrance of Conrad Kurz is of mad, black eyes and a cruel, lipless smile. Aware that his horrific visions had all come to pass, the vid log of the event then shows Machen leaping forward at the Primarch. However, the kill was never confirmed, as the video feed cut out right before the fight ensued. It is believed the Night Haunter allowed himself to be killed. He saw himself as a murderous and corrupt villain, the very thing he sought to destroy. Regardless, his final words are considered one of the great enigmas in the Imperium's history. Kaz's primary weapons were twin lightning claws, known as mercy and forgiveness. For protection, Kaz wore a terrifying suit of power armor known as the Nightmare Mantle, which was decorated with the flayed skin and body parts of his victims. In combat, he was also known to have wielded a flaying knife-shaped power sword and throwing knives known as widow makers. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you want to see more about the world of Warhammer 40k, make sure to subscribe to stay tuned.